tonight, God is going to finish up all the problems you brought. And whatever you have not got on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, uh, today. Look at somebody there and say today. The Lord is going to accomplish everyone in your life. Keep on standing. Father, we well, thank you. Lord, we we'll worship you. Great mighty God. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you do wonders in every life. Confirm everything you have promised. And we will never be the same in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, And heaven unites with you to say, Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we've been talking about Jesus, the all-sufficient Jesus. And we've looked at John, the gospel according to St. John, in the evenings at the crusade. And we've gone up to chapter 17. Now, we'll come to chapter 18, chapter 19, chapter 20, and chapter 21. And today, we're talking about Jesus, the Redeemer, seeking to restore, to renew, and to recommission us. He comes and he seeks for you. He looks for you. And he wants to restore you. Every height you fell from, you'll go back to that height. Every good thing that you are strayed away from tonight, you are returning in Jesus' name. It comes to restore. Number two, it comes to renew. It renew the strength of the spirit in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And it comes to recommission you. That means the commission God Almighty had for you from all eternity. And you have led that commission. Tonight is a recommissioning night. He recommission you. He recommission me. Amen. Once again, the message is Jesus the Redeemer, seeking to restore, to renew, and to recommission us. There are four things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the righteous carrier of our sins. He carried our sins away. He took everything, literally, everything you call sin, it came to take and carry out of your life. The righteous carrier. Number two, the reproached Christ. The reproached Christ. That means all your reproach, all your shame, all the various things you have done that you shall brought earthly shame and eternal shame, Christ has borne that for you, for me. Number three is the risen conqueror. Risen conqueror. He rose. He rose from the dead. And he brings that resurrection power also into your life. The risen conqueror. Number four is the reassuring captain. He comes. And when you have lost hope and you have said, there's no point living. There is no point being positive. There is no point making going on and making progress. He comes to you, the captain of your salvation, and he reassures you tonight. All the hope you have lost, everything will come back. Look at number one there. Number one, we're looking at the righteous career of our sins, smitten for our full redemption. Righteous. Carrier. He carried all our sins away. And carried all the consequences of sin. 
away. Uh, look at John chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 22. In John chapter 18 verse 22, it says, And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answer is thou the high priest. So look at verse 23. Verse 23 says, Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Smiting. Why smitest thou me? Can you think of the eternal Christ? Eternal Emmanuel, God with us. Can you think of our Savior? Can you think of our Redeemer? Can you think of the one that had been in eternity with the Almighty God being smitten by a poor man, a wretched man, and said, You spoke against the high priest that way. He is the real high priest. I mean, Christ. And for anybody to smite him like that, what do you think? If the most respected person you know will be smitten publicly, how do you feel? But here is the king of heaven. The king of saints and the Lord of lords be smitten. Why? Why was he smitten? I say, chapter 53 and I'm reading from verse 4. It says in Isaiah 53, verse 4, Surely he has borne our griefs. That's the reason why. He came to bear your grief and carried our sorrows. Carried. That's what we say. The righteous carrier of our sins. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Look at the next word there. Smitten of God, smitten of God and afflicted. Why was he smitten? Publicly like that, in a shameful, reproachful way. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, but he was wounded for a transgression. Because of your transgression, he was wounded. He was bearing the wound you should have borne. He was bearing the judgment that you should have borne. It says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That's it. That's it. Because of your iniquity. Normally, you should have taken the bruises. You should have taken the smiting. But the Lord said, don't worry, I'll bear it for you. I thought you'd say amen there. The judgment, he said, I'll bear it for you. The yoke, he said, I'll bear it for you. All the agony and of the consequences of sin you have committed, he said, I'll bear it for you. I need to send a thank you. Glory to the Lord. Praise the Lord to heaven because he bore all my shame, he bore all my griefs, he bore all my sorrows, he bore all my sins. He carried them and carried them away. You will not carry it again. You will not be burdened by it anymore. And then it says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And then look at this. It says, with his stripes. Tell me. With his stripes, we are healed. I am healed. I said I am healed. Say it for yourself and find it true. By his stripes, we are healed. And look at verse 6. There's something important I need to point to you in verse 6. In verse 6. In verse 6. Look at this. At the beginning, the, the word all. All. No exception. At the end of that verse, it says all. No exception. In the middle of that verse, it says everyone. Look at that. Look at that. That means today you are the candidate of the salvation of the Lord. Candidate 
of the forgiveness of candidate of the grace of God at the beginning all at the end of that verse all and in the middle of that verse everyone let me read it to you now all we like sheep have gone astray all we have turned everyone that's still all to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Give me a good day, amen. He laid on him. He laid on Christ. He laid on the one that came to carry all our sins away. He laid everything on him. He took it from you. Sin. He took it from you, the pressure. He took it from you, the punishment. He took it from you, the very presence of that sin. And everyone looks at you now. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, when you say, He is my Lord, all your iniquities, all your transgressions, all your sins are taken away. Taken away. Taken away. How many of your sins? How many of your iniquities? How many of your dead, dead misdeeds? All taken away. I announce you're free. I announce you're forgiven. Look at point number two here. We're coming to, we're coming to uh, now chapter 19 of John. John chapter 19 i'm reading there from verse 30 john 13 19 rather and we're looking at verse 30 look at verse 30 when jesus this is jesus we're talking about the one that is all sufficient for you for me and for everyone when jesus therefore had received the finger, he said, It is finished. Let me shout just that. It is finished. Let me hear the shout of that. There are words there. It is finished. What does that mean? It, the salvation. It. The redemption it is the healing it is the deliverance it is the final statement that judgment will not come on you anymore jesus went to the cross he died on the cross and the last word that is said he said it your salvation finalized you're not looking here and there again where is salvation where is forgiveness it is finished you're not saying where is the freedom and where is the where is the redemption that he has done in that word it we have redemption there we have salvation there we have forgiveness there we have new life there it is finished somebody shout amen. amen the next word there is is that means now is that means today is that means at the present time is whatever was not finalized before it's now done and you don't have to say I'll wait till tomorrow. He did not say it will be. He said it is. Praise the Lord. Your salvation is going to be a present salvation. Praise the Lord. The joy of salvation is at the very present moment. It's going to be upon your life in Jesus' name. Healing is. Deliverance is. Is freedom is it is at the very present time. Give me a shout of amen. amen. You know, some people they say, Okay, after the program, I will see the preacher. It's okay to see the preacher, 
If you see the preacher, you are coming with your testimony. Not that you are coming for the healing because it is done right here. It is done while you're sitting or standing there because it is. What's the next word there? Tell me, tell me. Finished. 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 Your agony all finished. Your suffering all finished. Amen. And all the oppression of the devil finished. What does that mean? Finalized, finalized. Nothing else. No remnant of that disease. No remnant of that heartache will remain. Finished, finalized. Finished. What does that mean? Complete. It means the miracle now is complete. Give me a good day. Amen. The deliverance now complete. It means perfect, perfected. When it says it is finished, it is perfected. And I see you tonight there. You are receiving that finished healing, that finished miracle, that finished, finalized, complete, perfect solution to your problem tonight in Jesus' name. It is finished. The condemnation of my sin, it is finished. The judgment over my sin, it is finished. The weakness of my past life, it is finished. The bondage that you are, it is finished. Shout, it is finished. Believe it as you say it, it is finished. Understand the experience comes to you as you say it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. I come into point number three. Point number three, the reason conqueror. Bringing us redemption and righteousness. The risen conqueror. And because he has risen, he has brought something. Look at John chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 1. John chapter 20 verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene. Early. When it was shed dark unto the sepulchre and seized the stone taken away from the sepulchre. The stone is rolled away. I said the stone is rolled away. Many people ask, how are you so sure that Jesus rose from the dead? Number one, the soldiers were guarding the place. That they were not allow any friend, any disciple to come there. And one friend, one disciple couldn't have rolled away the stone. Those soldiers were guarding the place. Then, as quick from heaven, came and rolled away the stone, you understand? The soldiers were military men on earth. But the one that came to roll the stone away was from heaven. And then when Mary got there and the rest of the people searching for him, they found the stone rolled away. Nobody could have done that. Not only that, number two. The soldiers that were there, when that angel came from heaven and rolled away the stone, they fell flat on their faces. The power 
of resurrection overpowered them, overcame them, and threw them lying on the ground. And those soldiers, had, they, had no, they had no doubt that Christ rose from the dead. Not only that, if you read the whole chapter, at the disciples came Peter and John, Peter ran and John ran beyond him, and they entered the tomb, and they found an empty tomb. Nobody in there. They found an empty tomb. The testimony of those people that found the empty tomb that shows that Jesus was risen. Not only that, the soldiers went to the powers that be. They went to the people that appointed them there and they said, you know what? Jesus rose from the dead. They said, shh, stop. Don't say that. Say somebody else come to take him away when you were sleeping isn't it a crime for those soldiers watching to even accept we were sleeping sleeping on duty those leaders they knew that jesus rose again and you know like i know and i know like you know that jesus christ who died and who was buried that he rose again. I said he rose again. The disciples were lodged behind closed doors. And Jesus, the reason to understand, the earthly Lord, if he wants to enter a place when he was still on earth, before his crucifixion, before his death, before he's rising from the dead, wanting to enter anywhere, he will knock at the door. And somebody from inside has to open the door. But now, evidence that he rose from the dead, he went through the locked door. He can go through the wall and go through anywhere. And today, any barrier before you, he will go through and get to you there. And he said, peace be still. Peace, peace, my peace I give unto you. He rose again. And because of that, everything that is dead in you will rise again. Everything dormant in your life will rise again. Because of that, your hope will rise again. When? When? You will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Because the power of his resurrection will walk in your life. Look at Romans chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 9. Romans chapter 10. We're reading from verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved give me a good amen it's asking us not to have blind faith I believe I believe I believe no it says consider the stone rolled away. Fact. It says, consider the empty tomb. A fact. It says, consider the falling down of the soldiers when the angel came from heaven. That's a fact. It says, consider that those um, soldiers went to the leaders in the land and they said, that man is risen. That's a fact. It says, consider that those leaders even wanted, they wanted to bribe them. They actually bribed them so that they will say he did not try. A fact. It says, consider that when the disciples went there, they saw an empty tomb. It says, consider while Mary turned and saw somebody that she thought was the gardener, said, Sir, 
if you have taken my Lord away from here, show me where you have taken him. And Jesus said, Mary. And her eyes opened. And she knew that it's, it's a fact. It's a fact. What's, what he's saying is, when you see a fact, whoever you are, well, will you not believe the fact? He says, when you know this is for real, well, will not you believe that? Somebody says, I mean, scientists, yes, I understand. We scientists will work with facts. And I showed you the facts now. He now says, if you have the courage to believe and to confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, I shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead tonight, thou shalt be saved. Look at verse 10. He says in verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He's just saying what you believe in your heart, confidently say it out. You know, there was, there was a time that many people in the world, they believed that the world was flat, not like a globe, flat. As if when you are walking on the, on the earth, you will soon get to the edge and you fall over the cliff. But somebody discovered it is round. It's a globe. And because he knew that was a fact, he said it, and the people who have not investigated, he said, no, that cannot be. And eventually, he kept on saying uh, what he believes. You must keep on saying what you believe, that Jesus is Savior, and that he rose from the dead. He says, if you believe it in your heart, you'll confess it with your mouth, and salvation is yours. Salvation is mine. Because I believe in my heart that he rose from the dead. He became Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And I believe, because I believe, I say it with my mouth, and salvation is mine. Redemption is mine. Salvation is yours. Somebody shout amen there. We're coming to number four now. Number four. The reassuring captain, broadening, the recommissioning of the restored. Well, the story here is this. Peter, because he knew he had disappointed the Lord, the disappointment grew to discouragement. And then he told the others, he says, I go a fishing. Nothing wrong with fishing, but the problem was with him, he had dropped that before. He had given up that before. And the Lord had given him the promise, I will make you not fish a fisher at the sea, but fishers of men. He abandoned God's call for him because he felt she was a disappointment. And because he felt discouraged. And the other people also said, we go with you. And became a stumbling block to other people. You will not be a stumbling block. Your vomit that you had dropped before, you will not swallow it back again. A good, good amen. That night, Jesus visited them. I would have thought a man who became a disappointment like that, he described me to other people. I would have thought Jesus should have said, you're going your way, go. But Jesus never abandons a discouraged person. You're discouraged. You've done things in your discouragement. They say I am bad, all right, I'm bad. I am, that's what they say. 
I'll prove it to them I am bad. And you see, Jesus will not come to you again. At that moment, Jesus will come to you. Somebody said, look at brother so-and-so. And another person said, why are you calling him brother so-and-so? He's a backslider. Leave him alone. Ah, they call me backslider, all right. Since they call me backslider, I am backslider. You will think that Jesus will not come to him again. Jesus will come to you. Wherever you are, whatever you have done, however you have gone astray, Jesus comes to you tonight. I am surprised. And I shouldn't be surprised. I am surprised. When Jesus got there, he didn't call all those disciples, seven of them all together, bunch of backsliders. No, Jesus never you see, it's any bad language for ever anyone. No matter where you have gone, what you have done, it says, children, do you have any bread? Children, do you have any bread? The bad name you have given yourself, Jesus will cancel that bad name. And the bad opinion you have about yourself jesus will cancel that bad opinion do you have any bread and they said no he wanted them to remember he wanted them to remember that what they were at the first time when he met peter when he met james and john they had caught nothing they had gone back to that situation. But he will help them. He will help them. That's why we love Jesus. He will help you. Tonight, he will help you. He said, cast your net there. And they didn't argue. They didn't say, no, there's nothing there. We are experienced fishermen. And we've been here all night. They just did what Jesus said. You will do what Jesus is saying. And they cast their net there. And lo and behold, they caught a lot. You will catch a lot. Emptiness in your life will turn to fullness. I said emptiness in your life will turn to fullness. And then they brought the fish up shore. And he didn't say, Peter, you see now, you denied me three times. See the result? Never. He has not come to condemn. He will not condemn you. He said, come and dine. I don't know why any reasonable person will see Jesus and see all these things that happen and not accept Christ. Look at him. Instead of bringing condemnation, he said, come and dine. He had cooked for them. And the edge. Then he said, Peter, Simon Peter, lovest thou me oh peter said i love you despite what happened i love you despite my weakness cowardice i love you despite my deny you i love you and jesus didn't say i don't believe I don't accept. Uh, some people say, if I repent and call on the Lord, will God, will God accept my confession? Yes, yes, yes. I will accept today as you confess him and you say, I love you, Lord. Is, that's all right. I accept. You accept him, he will accept you. The second time, why did Jesus ask the second time? He wanted Peter to realize what he was saying. And for Peter to understand, 
I said it once, I said it twice, I hear myself, I believe myself. Lovest thou me? Yes, Lord, I do. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. The third time, the third time, Jesus said, Simon Peter, son of Jonas, do you love me? Really, really love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know from the depth of my heart, I love you. And Jesus said, I said, no, I accept. Whatever confession you make about Christ tonight, he will accept. He will forgive you. He will erase the past. And Jesus said, what he said at the beginning, he said, follow me. Follow me. A renewed call. A recommissioning. Follow me. As he was following John, the beloved, John also followed. And Peter said, Lord, what will this man do? And Jesus said, what is that to you? You follow me. Don't look at other people. What will that lady do? What will that man do? What will that friend do? The Lord has called you. And you are going to respond to the call. And you say, I will follow. I will follow. I will follow. Whatever others do, whatever others do not do, I will follow Jesus Christ. Say it. I will follow Jesus Christ. I have decided to follow Jesus, not turning back, not turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, I have decided I'll follow. I'm going to follow. You followed, you indicated from the first day I followed Jesus. And now you are taking the final, final, final decision. I will follow. Nothing will turn your back. A friend will not turn your back. Somebody jesting will not turn your back. And because he followed, Peter became a significant person in the kingdom of God. The decision you make for Christ tonight, turning away from everything of the past and turning onto this new face in Christ will make you significant in life. Significant for life significant throughout your life and everybody said it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed this final day you are taking the decision i follow christ i turn away from the past i turn to christ my savior, the reason one. As you are taking that decision, and you say, I'll follow. I'll follow. And I'll not turn back anymore. I'll follow. Then restoration will come. Salvation will come. The blessings of heaven will come upon you. Anyway, you are raised up that hand. You're saying, I'm following Christ. I am following Christ anywhere, anywhere, right, left, center, at the back. I follow, raise up that hand. Online, I follow Christ. Forget your past. The Lord is calling you today. I follow Christ. And over the television you are watching, over the radio you are listening, I follow. Just raise up your hand there. God bless you. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. No shame. Stand up and say, I follow. By your standing up, you are declaring whether others 
follow or not, whether others agree or not, whether others join me or not, this is my decision. I follow Christ. As we are standing, tell the Lord quietly there, Lord Jesus, I thank you. You were crucified for me. You died for me. You are buried for me. You rose again for me. And now I've decided I'll follow you for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Keep on standing. We're praying, Father. We thank you for the call that has come forth. We thank you for the faith you put in the heart of the people who are standing. They know that Jesus rose from the dead for a fact. And they are believing that fact right now. Lord, I pray new life will come to everyone salvation will come to everyone new life and eternal life for everyone standing believing in jesus name give them the joy of salvation and the new life that comes for salvation thank you lord it is done salvation is there redemption is there Restoration is there. It's done. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors will come to you right now. And they'll take your details. So I will call on our moderating overseer tonight to help us at this time. Praise the Lord. We thank God for a message we just listened to. And I believe that there may be people here tonight who have made that decision to give their life to Christ. And I want to tell you that that decision is very, very important. It's a lifetime decision. And you want to uh, get every help you need in order to continue in the Lord and to remain standing. And that's why I'm encouraging you tonight to link up with your pastors and leaders. If you don't know any pastor, uh, the person that invites you to this Zoom line tonight has the person to link you up with a church location close to you. And the Lord himself will keep you with that decision in Jesus' name. Amen. Please don't forget, make sure you, you do that. Now, we want to stand up on our feet for the final prayer. Let's, let's all rise up as we await the prayer from the servant of God. Praise the Lord. Tonight is your night. Jesus will not miss you. You will not miss your miracle. It is finished. Your sickness finished. Your pain finished. Your disease finished. Every problem, every mountain in your life tonight finished in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. Lay the other hand where you have the challenge. You will not carry that thing back home. 
We're ready now. Heaven is ready for you. Get ready. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We know from the declaration of Christ, it is finished. Sicknesses finished. Diseases finished. Abnormalities, infirmity in the body finished. Lord, I pray right now you touch everyone. You break every yoke. You destroy the works of the devil. Without exception, set everyone free. That madness, I command you, you are taken away in Jesus' name. Soiling in your body, vanish away in Jesus' name. Blindness, Lord, open those eyes right now. And deafness, dumbness, make them speak and hear in Jesus' name. Cancer, you're healed. Ulcer, you're healed. Any strange sickness, disease in your body, you are healed in Jesus' name. Every attack, Totally cancelled. Any discomfort completely removed. Lord, everywhere now, right, left, center, back, front, online, over the television, over the radio, everywhere, all their sicknesses, infirmities, and diseases, they are finished in Jesus' name. You are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. That the manifestation of that finished work in your life right now. I am healed. I am whole. From the top of my head to the tip of my toe. I am healed. It is done. It is done. It is finished. In Jesus' name we pray. Together. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We thank God for bringing us to the hand of the global crusade for this month but before we go i just want us to go to the lord and just thank him tonight I want us to close our eyes and begin to bless the lord indeed the lord has been so good to us he kept you alive to witness the easter retreat of this year not only alive physically, but spiritually. Sitting down to hear the word of God again. Let's remember to bless the Lord for spiritual impartation, for all the things the Lord has visited in our lives, all the blessings we have received, and all that the Lord has done for our families and for the church. Let's bless the name of the Lord for the prayer the Lord answered. Let's give him all the glory. Let's thank him for every day of the crusade. Let's thank him for the success of the meeting. Let's just bless the name of the Lord for the journey message. Let's thank God for all the ministers. Let's praise the name of the Lord for the manifestation of his power. Let's just bless him. Like Paul the Apostle was telling the Galatian church, he said that before them, Christ was expressly set forth. They were able to see Christ, and that's what the Lord has done for us this global crusade. Christ, the Alpha and Omega. 
Let's just bless the name of the Lord and thank God for what the Lord has done for us tonight. Like she told Gideon, go in this thy might. All that we have received, let's pray that Lord will give us the grace to keep them. Let's pray that the Lord will help us to continue to meditate on this world. Let's pray that as a result of this global crusade, the church of God will move forward. Kingdom of Christ shall increase. And the Lord will continue to increase the strength of our general superintendent. Let's pray for him. Oh, let's pray for him from the depth of our hearts that the Lord will keep him for us. The Lord will strengthen him. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Let's pray that the Lord will renew his strength. And the next global crusade, let's pray that the Lord will keep us alive. And the Lord will help us that we will labor together with God to bring people into the kingdom. And that the Lord will do great things among us again. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we bless you tonight. We really appreciate you for all that you've done. You are a great God, full of mercy and compassion. The great Lord, you have taught us. You have imparted our lives. You've done great and wonderful things for us. You've heard our prayers and you've answered us. Glory be to your holy name. We know that great things are ahead of us. Lord, you said upon this rock, you build your church and the gate of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord, this global crusade, we continue to move from strength to strength. And no door shall be closed against the church in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, all that we have received during this global crusade, you will make them permanent. Amen. You will use it, Lord, to move your church forward in Jesus' name. Amen. We bless you because we've answered our prayers. We give you all the honor and all the glory. And for our general superintendent, we pray that, Lord, you will renew his strength. Amen. You will give him, Lord, fresh anointing from on high in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray that all our leaders, you will continue to empower them. They will not be weary. They will not be down. The grace of the Lord shall be multiplied unto them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you and good night.